Well, good evening, folks. Uh, it's that time of the week again where we uh, come before the Lord in prayer uh, in our families together, or maybe you're on your own this evening at home. Uh, but just to, to focus our thoughts, our minds, our hearts, uh, we turn again to the scriptures. And uh, I want us to turn to Psalm 24 uh, this evening. Uh, I was out for a little while uh, on the bike this afternoon, just with the kids heading down the greenway. And it was a beautiful day. And the verse came to me, The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. Uh, so that takes us to Psalm uh, 24. Let's read it. Uh, together please Psalm 24 the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness the world and those who dwell therein for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place he who has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, uh, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the King of Glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up you everlasting doors. And the King of Glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of Glory. Oh man, wonderful psalm. It starts off with that total, you know, that absolute sovereignty of God. The earth is the Lord's. It's all his. Every single part of it. There isn't one atom that is not under his jurisdiction. It's all his. That's the big picture. That's where he starts. And then just to make sure we get it, he says, and all its fullness. Every part, every tiny detail, it's all under his sovereignty. Every uh, blade of grass, every daisy and dandelion, everything, everything, all its fullness, every tiny virus, it's all under his control. It's wonderful. The world and those who dwell therein. Now that's another application, isn't it? Because that's you and me. That's people. Uh, and we are accountable to him. We are under his jurisdiction. We are accountable to him. Yes, sometimes we can look at the sovereignty of God and think it's wonderful. Everything's under his control. But so are you. And so am I. We're accountable to him fully. We're responsible to him. He says, verse 2, For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Now that's wonderful, isn't it? I mean, how could we ever uh, really do that? Found you know, a world upon um, the seas and the waters. Uh, we ought to marvel, even just, you know, at the words there on the surface that God is able to do such things establish the world upon such a watery foundation but he is able of course in the scriptures uh, waters and the seas they are often you know, pictures of the change which is part and parcel of living in our world uh, there's always change uh, you look at the sea it's never the same two days in a row it's always coming and going or it's stormy one day it's calm the next um, there is no sea in heaven in that picture language of Revelation. There's no change, there's no upset. Uh, things are, are constant and good and perfect all the time. But the world right now, the Lord has still established it 
upon the seas. Yes, he knows that change is part and parcel of our life. Even these big changes that we've been going through, the Lord knows and he can establish the world upon such changing times, changing seasons. He knows what our world is like. He made it. Yeah, we don't like change. Maybe there are some parts of this current change that you do like. I know for sure there'll be lots of things in this current change that you don't like. And so it is, you know, we know this world is not our final destination. Uh, we long for something different. And so did David here, verse 3. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? Oh yeah, there's a better place. There is a better place to come. And David knows it. Oh, who who can go there? Who can go to God's place? Uh, it does not have a watery foundation. There's no change. It is perfect. Uh, and yes, the joys of earth have left David's soul unsatisfied. His heart and flesh cry out for the living God. He he wants glory. But who, uh, who, who, can, who can ascend to it? Verse 4, he who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. Yeah, there's a problem there, isn't there? There's a problem there because that rules us all out. Uh, we're, we're not clean. We're not clean. Uh, we need to be made clean if we are to be admitted into heaven. Uh, but that's the gospel, isn't it? That's that's the wonder. Yes, we need a saviour. Uh, and yes, even in the Old Testament, the saviour was promised. But when we come into the new, then yes, the saviour, he comes. Christ comes and he makes this possible uh, David knew it would be possible uh, even even for him as he looked forward to Messiah coming verse 5 he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation oh yes because of Jesus blessing can be received righteousness can be given to us sinners it's a wonderful thing Christ has come to do. He came, he died on Calvary's cross to pay for all of our uncleanness and to gift us his wonderful, perfect, godly righteousness. And it's even for Jacob. Verse 6. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him. Yes, even for twisters like you and me, this salvation is fully available. But we've got to seek him. And really that's it. we just got to seek him. To ask for this salvation. To ask for God's kindness. For his goodness to be, to be shown to us. God is willing. God is able. Seek him. Seek him tonight. Seek him in prayer. Seek his face. We need to seek the saviour. Who is he? Who is he? Verses 7 to 10 really reveal uh, who he is. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who, who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. In those verses we have uh, the picture of Christ ascending uh, into heaven after his time uh, on earth. He is the one who has opened up uh, the everlasting doors. He is the one who has opened heaven for us tonight. How is it that we can come and approach God? It's because of Jesus. He's opened up the door. He is uh, the first fruits uh, of the gospel. And he opens the doors for us. He is the high king of heaven. He's the king of glory. Who is he? He's the Lord. He's God himself. He is strong and mighty, able to help us as we cry to him now tonight. 
and he's mighty in battle. Not that, you know, he will be mighty in battle, but he's proved himself mighty in battle because he did battle for us at Calvary. And he won. He won. He has defeated our sin. He has defeated hell. He has defeated the devil. He is the king of glory. And he has opened heaven for us. And as we approach the throne of God now this evening, it's through this same wonderful, strong, mighty saviour. And in the space of these 10 short verses in Psalm 24, we see him plainly as the creator of all things, creator and sustainer of everything. So we come with confidence in his ability to uh, bring about change in our world. He can do it. We come to him, our creator. He's also our redeemer. Uh, we're in no doubt about his love to us. His willingness to hear us. His desire is that we come to him now and we pray and we pour out our hearts to him. Already he has exposed his heart fully to us upon the cross of Calvary. His love is so very, very great. He's our redeemer, the one who makes us clean. Let's seek his face tonight. Our creator, our redeemer and our king. He is the king of of glory. He's our King, King Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. So please, as you come tonight, uh, where you are right now, um, be aware of who you come to. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. So pray, uh, pray big, and pray in the knowledge that he that he, he is for you, that his love has already done battle for you and made you clean. And may our time of prayer then this evening be a little glimpse of what it is to come through those everlasting doors and spend some precious time with our great King, with our Creator, and with our wonderful Redeemer, even Christ the Lord. Let us pray.